and let's do it in English. So, my name is Um Just so I remember to say, if you have any questions, comments, please just raise your hand, and it's always nice to have some dialogue in the in the talk. Security, that's not kind of my main focus in my day-to-day -day job. Uh, I work as an Android developer at uh, football. It's a live score app for, for football or soccer, if you want. Uh, of course, as a developer, you're always kind of working with security, but uh, that's really not the main focus. Then the sun sets and uh, it's dark and I get my hoodie on. Uh, everything that I do that's kind of security related, that's stuff that I do outside my, my regular job. So I've put up some kind of agenda so you know what's coming at you today. So I'll talk a little bit about publishing the security holes that I've, I've, I have, and uh, we'll talk do a little deep dive in, in some of them. And at the same time, we'll kind of pick up a few typical weaknesses that we see in the in the web apps today. So, I have a blog, and that's really the reason why I'm around talking to to people these days. Uh, on that blog, I've published uh, so far 19 security holes that I've found myself and uh, also information about a few others. And I try to go into them in, in a little bit of technical detail so kind of people like many of you developers uh, can kind of relate to it and hopefully learn something and understand why breaches are happening today, why we see leaks of information. I've mainly focused on uh, web apps that includes apps that kind of behave their API talking to some web app uh, and I've been doing uh, so-called responsible disclosure. I'll talk a little bit about that afterwards. But I want to start with a little quick show of hands and I have like, I don't know, five questions. So if you answer yes, just raise your hand and please keep it up all the five questions. So we'll see how many hands we've got in the end. <coughs> so I wonder, if you don't know what Digipost is, then it's, you don't have a Digipost user. But who here has a Digipost user? Okay. Most of you. If you keep your hand up, please. When, uh, do you have an account in s -Bank yet? Yeah. So more hands. Do you own a car? Yeah, okay, we're almost at the 100% thing. Travel with Bing the last five ish years. Yeah. And finally, do you have a cell yeah. <laughs> Did I get you all? Yeah. Okay, you can take some of your hands. Thank you. So I have some, some news. One good and one bad. And as you might guess, the, the bad one is that you've probably been affected by and some of the this is that I've found the last uh, last year or so. <laughs> the good news is that it's supposedly fixed now. Uh, <laughs> anyone that I didn't see didn't have your hand up, I probably have some case for you as well. So this kind of nicely goes into why I'm doing this. People sometimes ask me. Why do you publish these cells? Why do you go out public? Do you hate people? Uh, do you want to get in trouble with police? And I don't want to go get into trouble with police. And uh, I don't think I hate people more than the next guy. But uh, <laughs> I've always been curious. I mean, I've been online for a few decades. And just browsing around, and of course, I'm a developer. So I've seen quite a few security holes. And some of them have been serious, like they can take down an entire company or they're leaking, leaking data about a lot of people. 
So I always tell the company, hey, look, you have this issue here. You should probably look into it. And they oh, yeah, you're right. Thank you. We fix it now. Good stuff. And often that's okay, but sometimes I'm like, but you've probably had this sold for like five years, ten years. You've probably leaked a lot of data about a lot of your customers. Shouldn't you tell them? And in some cases, I think you should do that because they just move on. They don't get any attention. They don't tell their customers. They don't get any fines. Just life moves on. And I've regretted not publishing some of those cases, the worst ones. And that's, yeah, my goals, it's, it's kind of, I want people, I want the kind of the normal people open the street, not just you developers, to know that their data is probably not safe. They should be aware of that. It should be kind of thinking twice before uploading some picture or sending some message. Kind of think what they're about what they're doing. And I want my kind of our industry to have increased focus on, on security. Because we I think we have some issues. We we have a way to go. So that's that's why I'm doing this. <coughs> And this is kind of how I do this. Um, I'm following a principle called, called responsible disclosure. Um, for me, it's these three steps. Pretty easy. I mean, you find an issue, you report it, you give them time to fix it. I give them 90 days. I know others give them like 30 or a week or, yeah. Yeah, part of being responsible is making sure that the fix is done before you publish it. And then it's the last step to, to tell people, publish a write up or something. And it sounds easy, right? But it's not always that easy. I mean, reporting it, some companies there are so hard to get hold of. They have their company website, no contact information. No email, no customer support, no nothing. Uh, then you have other companies like IKEA. I mean, you could try any hold of them. You, you re reach a Swedish person that can kind of help you putting your furniture together. Yeah, it can be hard. Shouldn't be. And then you get the time to fix. And that's mostly that's. I mean, the fixes are done in like a few days, and that's. Very nice to see. Sometimes you see that uh, information is lost in translation between customer support and the developers. They're not giving the right information or all the information, and time goes by. Sometimes they don't really understand that they have an issue at all. And so the easy part is kind of telling others, just publishing the case, but it can be scary. It was pretty scary for me in the start. It's like, how will the companies react? Will they send the police at me? I didn't know. But it uh, looks like it's, it's going all right. And um, yeah, I love cliches. I love, I mean, I need to have my terminal with a black background. So green points in my case and I like to wear hoodies as well but uh, yeah always nice to kind of be the stereotype um, approach I've used for finding these issues is pretty simple right I've, this is, most of the cases I've found are cases where I have a use of myself it's a service that I use it's, I'm a customer at the company and then I have like a uh, Chrome developer tools open at the same time, time as I'm, I'm logged in. And that's kind of all it takes sometimes. Uh, I use an HTTP proxy from time to time, stuff like that, but it doesn't really get that hard. I mean, uh, 
I'm sometimes afraid that people think that I think I'm so smart at finding this stuff, but it's so simple you can almost train a monkey to do it, right? So we'll look, take a closer look at a few. I hope uh, more and more of you are getting these uh, boxes. I hope. It's a smart meter. Um, <clears throat> and within this year, everyone in Norway is supposed to have them in, in their homes. And what's special about the smart meter is just that it reports the electricity automatically. And pretty often. Like, every second minute or every second hour, depends on the, on the public company. So a lot of people have talked about security and radiation and everything. And I'm not a really a hardware hacker or some sort, so I, would, I don't think I would have found any issues with the buttons themselves. But uh, where is the information sent to? Yeah, of course, that's a central server, right? So that's a kind of the single point of failure that you don't want to have. Um, so when I got my box, I'm like, I have a smartphone, so I kind of want to connect to that smart meter and get data out, out of it. So it's, I was interested and kind of logged into the, to the power company of mine. And if I'm your user, you don't really want me to log into your site because and I, I'll probably have some web developer tools open. And I did that when I was logged into Noisnet. Um, and I have this, this uh, nice form where you can update your personal data, like address and phone numbers. Oh, not address. Address is locked to the, to the meter. Right. So I. I uh, Look at the HTML and the calls going when, when uh, saving the data. And I just noticed, hey, they send a customer ID back to the server. And that's just never a good sign. I mean, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong. But if you are a login user, there's really no need to send that ID back when it's updating your personal information. So that's when you want to input some other ID. And of course, the noise that it was this integer, which you can guess you could kind of plus one and you will update another person's information. Of course, you don't want to try that just with some random next number and all writing their data. So I, I um, asked a friend, um, for his ID, and asking him, I can I kind of test this? <laughs> so what I did was, I removed all the other information, like phone number and, and, and all the stuff that you could update, except the email and, and the customer ID, and I posted it. And it kind of didn't seem to work at first, but then I got this email that said, hey, do you want to, to uh, create this uh, user? <laughs> and I got the same customer ID, which I already had, and I got a PIN, a PIN code that I could use. Uh, actually, the, the link in the email didn't work, but I did get a, a PIN code. And I have this, this nice feature, right? Where you can actually add other customer relations to your own account. So all I had to do was use the customer ID and use the pin code I got in the email and add that relationship to, to my account. Um, and what did I get? So I, I get got all the personal information of the other person, like name, address, phone number, email address. Uh, I got their invoices and I got their usage, power, power usage. Uh, at this time, they only reported like once a week or something like that. So it wasn't really a 
could use the data to see is he home right now or not. But that's where we're heading. That's kind of the next step for these companies. That's what they are show you. They'll show you, oh, you use this much power now. And you'll see that how it uh, changes from hour to hour. So you could use this information to see, oh, is he home now? And you have the address and everything. So, yeah. And this was a product by a company named Enu. So what I could do was just take some of the text from the login page and, and Google it. And I got all these other login pages with probably the same issues, right? So this affect that probably, I haven't got this confirmed, but I'm assuming hundreds of thousands of Norwegians would probably also a little bit uh, abroad as well. And there is a reason that the list continues down below the screen. That's because there are quite a few power companies in, in Norway. So yeah. But, kind of technical again. This is the kind of the single most common thing that I see. You have to be logged in at the service, you have to be logged in at, at the web page. Uh, if you're not logged in, if you don't have a valid user, if you're not authenticated, then you, you can't kind of misuse or abuse these uh, problems. Uh, there's always this one call that is missing the authorization check. You can't forget to check. Is this user allowed to update this customer ID? Or is the user allowed to fetch, which is more common, to fetch the data from this ID? It's always this single call that one forgets. It's pretty simple, it shouldn't be that. And it's not a problem in itself, but once you have issues like this and you're using IDs where <coughs> you can just take plus one and get the next one. And you kind of, the problem increases in size, right? Because you can systematically go and through <coughs> and download all data or delete a lot of data and yeah. So if they had a, if like a grid or a UID as a unique identifier that you couldn't guess, then the problem would have been less of a size. I mentioned uh, Bing. So I have, I have small kids. So charter has kind of become my type of vacation. It's easy. You get the plane, you get the bus, you get the Lulu and Bone, Bomsa, stuff like that. It's easy. So uh, this year we went to Bulgaria. And uh, the moment I, I paid pay the bill for the vacation, I got this email from uh, Bing, uh, and I talked about this uh, sh online shop, Airshopan, which is a service by Thomas Cook Airlines, which is, is kind of companies that had the flight for my travel. And I saw the link, it's like, I had an uh, idea of the travel, just an editor, and had a date of the date of the travel. It's like, isn't it, that's a little bit, should there be more information? Should it be this easy to log in? Because if you click the link, you got into the page and you could see information about all the travels and uh, when travel is going to happen and stuff like that. The point of the, uh, the site is to kind of sell more, to, to have it to buy champagne, uh, champagne on, the, on the airplane and get a better meal. <coughs> but I, I looked into this um, call that the, this after being logged in, the, the, um, you got this call back and it did this uh, IX call to fetch more information about the travel and send a lot of data. It's like, this looks uh, difficult to abuse. Uh, and I saw that if you kind of miss the date 
that the travel was going to be with more than one day. You, you didn't get any information. But the funny part was that if you removed the parameter, it was okay. So if you didn't specify a date at all, <laughs> then it was good. So all you had to say was like, I'm traveling with a thing, and I have this integer booking ID. And of course, you could just plus one, minus one, whatever, and get a lot of data. And this is kind of the information you could get from this. It's the name of everyone in this booking, uh, email address, time and date of travels, flight numbers, and uh, it doesn't matter. Some people are, hey, I don't care if you know when I travel to, to wherever. And, um, well, yeah, but if you found the, the airport or any company related to air travel and asked, is this person aboard the plane now? They will not give you that information. You're not supposed to know when someone or who is flying. Um, this is kind of, you don't just call the airport and it's uh, this uh, politician aboard now. You're not supposed to know that. Yeah? Have you looked at what information you can get out of Amadeus? I, I haven't. Uh, but I have been... I have been considering uh, looking into it. Because they, they have a lot of information. What you need is, uh, is the... It should open for some interesting, yeah. <laughs> so, right. But yeah. And the interesting thing here was also that you could get information about travels like more than five years back in time. Mm. So you can see, hey, did you did you go to a business trip today? So it's better. You travel to Sweden with this woman. Who's, who's that? So it's kind of, yeah. For most people, it doesn't really matter, but it should not be there. Well, why would there be five years old data out there? No, it, should, just, it shouldn't happen. So we kind of continue co to collect uh, issues that we see. Uh, I've folded uh, the ones that are kind of for this, this case. And um, still not an issue. It's not a problem to use an incremental ID until you have another problem, because then it's a big problem. But um, the problem here was really that the one parameter that was supposedly required was not required after all. So that's, that's nice. Huh? They remember to kind of check the parameter if it was there, but didn't check it was, if it was there at all. This is a more recent case. I don't know if you saw headlines like uh, these in the news lately. This is kind of an interesting case because I had a friend. It's like, ah, I just want to know when the paper garbage is going to be collected. Wouldn't it be nice to have like a Alexa service or Google Assistant service that you could say that. Uh, and you could just ask for it. So uh, he looked into the website of uh, B, which is the local uh, waste management company here in, in Bergen. Looked at the web page, but, and you could search and get the data, but it was like in a lot of HTML, a lot of markup, a lot of CSS, a lot of. It's just a mess. You couldn't kind of use the data. Uh, so I said, hey, you got this app. Maybe they're using a different API. Maybe you could get more structured data from it. And looking at the app, so what you do is just enter your address, say where you live, 
and you get kind of a calendar or a list of dates when the different types of garbage is being picked up. No, I, I would never ever have checked this for a security problem because what kind of data do we go there? Nothing. It's just when the waste is picked up, right? Well, I use a uh, HTTP um, proxy for this one. And I, I search my own address. It's so like, the first thing I noticed was the kind of the listing thing of all the houses in my streets. was like, that's my name. Why is the name there? The name is not in the app. And then when you click into the addresses, there's this other columns like, that's my national number, national ID, or um, social security number, if you want, or social number, as we say in Norwegian. It's like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so I could just search for all my neighbors, so hey, collect the data. And, um, it's kind of, yeah, it's like, is this legal? Um, Actually, Dr. Uh, Tulsina, uh, they say that uh, you're supposed to send uh, the social security number uh, on an encrypted line. They were actually using HTTP only. So, if not legal, it's kind of borderline what they're allowed to should do. So, I asked another guy that you might have heard <coughs> about, um, Halvor Nigo. He found uh, the issues in the app of Rematusen's app for, for shopping. And I asked him, is this okay? And we kind of looked at it and, um, and we found these pages, which was hosted at just the root URL of the web service URL. And these pages seem to should have been some internal pages because they gave a status about a lot of web services and you see a name of a lot of uh, kind of local waste management companies and, 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 and yeah similar to that and it said if the what kind of version of the software they were running and the, the URL so what we could actually do was to just look at all these other companies and uh, since this was uh, SOAP, I don't know if you know SOAP, but it's a mess to work with, uh, but uh, normally the services give a lot of information about how you're supposed to use the service, what kind of input you, you need to have and what kind of output you get. So we, we um, kind of just did a little checking and, and found that the, we could find the same type of information and also <coughs> invoices and information about people not paying their in own invoices, stuff like that for a lot of people. And um, there's always someone saying, yeah, it's not so, doesn't really matter, it's just a social security. <laughs> yeah. But not everyone agree, and, and the fact that they fix it and remove it kind of tells a lot. It, it does matter. It shouldn't have been there. So it, you can't really, probably not see the details here, but it doesn't really matter. But what happened was that we contacted North Consult Information System um, and told them about the issue. And I kind of closed it down, or fixed it, or whatever. But we kept pulling their sources, just checking it's the truth. And uh, they said that they fixed it like air in day five. But when we called some of these services, we were passing two months, three months, and uh, the services. Some of them are still up. Um, it's like, yeah, it was, didn't look good. We didn't get a good impression of, of 
their systems. And uh, you can see some of the smileys or colors are changing from, from red to green, sad face to smiley. Um, and then they change back because they stopped the service in the Windows machine somewhere. But every night the machine rebooted. And what did it do when it restarted? Yeah, it started the service again. It's like, oh, you don't really know what you're doing. And it affected so many people. So, in, in the address register in, in Norway, it's kind of public. It's easy to get a full list of addresses. So, you could pretty systematically go through here and, and collect names, social security numbers, addresses, stuff like that. So now we're kind of adding to the list. Uh, and this is uh, actually, I wouldn't expect it to see it that often as I do, but very often data transfers are not encrypted. When they should have been. It's so easy to, do, to have HTTPS and stuff like that today. But very often it's not used. Surprisingly often, I see too much data returned. Like this, they're supposed to give you a list of dates, <coughs> but they, they give you the social security number as well. And, and that's, yeah, it's too common. And the reuse of the login. We didn't know the username and passwords of the other services. But it was the same, right, for all the services. So we had one simple username and password, which probably could have been like, be like 10 first you would have guessed in the first case. And they used it all over all the services. And they had this internal status page exposed to the internet. It should not have been on the internet. Uh, and this one was indexed by Google as well, so you could just search for it. <laughs> <coughs> and again, it's not really an issue, but because of the SOAP services, we had kind of the API docs, right? We knew how all the services were, we knew all the kind of different types of data we would get back. Um, I mean, you, you don't want your security to be you hiding the documentation of the service, of course. But maybe you didn't need to have it online. So one last uh, last case here, and, and I haven't published this one yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to name the company in the end. Uh, I don't think so. That's kind of also another twist of this. It's kind of suddenly I'm the one deciding should I name the company, should I not. I think it's easy when it's like a, a big insurance company and they're leaking a lot of personal data. It's easy to say, hey, look, this big company did this. But then you have these small IT companies with one guy, two guys. And it's kind of getting, yeah, I don't want to affect individual. Uh, and I often check kind of the sizes of the companies, how many people work there, how much money are they earning, stuff like that to kind of make my own decision if it's okay or not to, to publish information about it. In this case it's kind of borderline. And it says decentralized backup. It's because it's backup that should not have been decentralized. I want to publish a, a post about so-called Google hacking, which is really kind of just using Google as a search engine to find, to find security issues, to find systems that are more open than it should be. And uh, doing some research for, for this post, I of course started trying out these things, right? So Google has these nice operators that you can use. You can say that a string should be only in the title, only in the URL, only in the text, maybe some certain file types or 
just search for this one particular site. Um, so I'll try that a little bit. Let's see. Um, and I did something similar to this. Uh, if you know Apache, uh, the web server, it's the title of, of directories that are open, uh, it is index.f. And it's pretty from a common uh, server. So um, if you search for that term, you'll get a lot of open directories, right? Uh, and I added something like backup and a little bit more information. I, I won't say because the Google search results there are not removed yet, uh, though the, the problem itself is, is fixed. Uh, so I found this one. So what is this? Oh. <laughs> this is a direct listing, right? And it's a web server, which has a file called something like backup as well and site.zip. It's like, this looks like an online store. <laughs> Isn't this an e-commerce site we can buy from? Could this really be? <clears throat> and I don't know, should I have stopped there and uh, sent them an email and said, I see some file names that seems like files that shouldn't have been online. Um, well, I clicked them, so I downloaded them. And I always say that I don't download a lot of stuff. I kind of always check that, okay, I can get my user, I can get another user, and kind of try to keep it as little as possible, not get a lot of data. But there is kind of all or nothing. You want the gig of data or not? It's like, yeah, so I downloaded it. I took a look in the SQL. And of course, as you can imagine, uh, they had like, I think it was a thousand customers, people that had shopped online on their site. And of course, you could see their names, addresses, email, phone numbers, mm -hmm. what have you been shopping? Uh, and you got this um, hash password. But since you also got the uh, site and stuff in the zip file, all the source files, all the setup, all anything, and you, you could kind of see why the password looked like it did. Uh, you could see the password salt, uh, you could see the number of iterations used for hashing it, and stuff like that. So, but, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> doesn't kind of make it trivial to recover the password, but it certainly makes it much easier to kind of run through the <coughs> password list and try to match, try to match the passwords. So I was like, is this a case for trying? I don't know if you've, uh, yeah? Uh, were the email hashed? No. So you don't really need to crack the password at all, you can just send the email to the customers with a complete copy of this store. It's so much faster than trying to break it. So, it should be there. Hopefully you know a uh, website called, called Have I Been Pawned. It's run by an uh, Australian called Troy Hunt. So, what he does is kind of collecting all these data breaches with all the passwords that have been used in the breaches. So people are are alerted when there's a new breach. And uh, yeah, you can, there is always this, also a service to kind of check if a password is already in use or, or uh, it have been used in another breach. Uh, of course, I first contact the company that the, the, the store, which forwarded word in my email to kind of the IT company behind the uh, people hosting the site. And they said to me, uh, this backup was like from, I don't know, June. And they said, ah, we have logs for one year back. And we can see that no one has access to these files. And only you. Uh, could be. But it was indexed by Google some time ago. 
So, I don't know if that's true or not. But what I did was just go in deleting the files from my store. Getting rid of the data. I don't want to sit with that kind of data. I don't want to be the one that's leaking personal information about you. So I deleted them. I did not uh, send a password to hashes and email to, to anyone to like have them being informed stuff like that. So I kind of, yeah, I chose to believe them. Is it right? Yeah. Who knows? Maybe we'll see later on. Some data comes out from this, from this uh, site. like no I don't know if it's true but I have a feeling that it, if a uh, file is removed from the server it kind of looks like Google checks it the yeah my point is you can then read it from Google without, without going inside without getting into the yeah it's right yeah, yeah. actually I don't know the answer but I think it would have been explained I didn't check the, the, the Google cache other than that it has been removed from it now that's for sure. Um, but I don't know if they cache that big file so I don't know where the limit is. So what do we see here? It's kind of internal page exposed to the internet. Well, it's not supposed to be an in, in internal page either. It's not supposed to be a page. I mean, you have, you do a backup on your server, you put it in, in some directory. Maybe you shouldn't have it on the same server as the website itself. Probably not. But it kind of falls into the category of, of um, misconfiguration of software, of server software. We see that a lot. I also found some other interesting things doing the Googling. But uh, yeah, this is kind of the, one of the first things I saw. So it's, it's kind of the biggest thing as well. <coughs> so I would like to stay for a long time with a lot of other issues and other games uh, because there are so many mistakes that we as developers do and, and yeah, we have quite a few things to kind of think through when we do our work. But if I could give you kind of one assignment from today, it would do, be to do a site search for your own company. And see what does the own company have online indexed by Google because it's not always what you expect. You often see these kind of test sites uh, and developer sites, and they're not always protected that well, they're not always up to date, so it could be worth uh, checking out. So other than that, I'm wondering, are there any questions or comments before I... Yeah. So, you talk a lot about uh, personal information, um, but that is not the only thing that are vulnerable. Uh, the big businesses even having their services taken down, or even if there's no personal information, that could be critical information for that company. Um, think about like this. I, think, I don't think you have a lot of user data on your services, but you definitely want to protect your business anyway. Yeah, right. And then I, I'm not a, a pen tester. Uh, I don't, I haven't been fired by, by any of these companies to kind of look into the security. So I don't really want to look too far, look too hard because it's important for me that they don't question my motives. Why are you doing this? Why did you break into a server or something like that? I don't, I don't want to be that, that person because then I will get in trouble. And uh, I can promise you, I have just good, good reasons for doing it. So, but yeah, absolutely. 
that, but that's kind of why all, most of my cases are about personal data leaking. But yeah, hopefully they'll kind of think through. Oh, well, maybe there's more. Maybe we should hire someone for tester side because it's always good to have a third party company to come in and look at your stuff. If, if it's the source code, which is kind of trying to break in from outside. Anyone? So then I'll say thank you for your time.